welcome back to the green yard. It is uh, the end of December and we've had actually uh, about a week or so of really good temperatures uh, in the low 70s for a high, uh, upper 40s, even up into the 50s a little bit for a low. So it's been a really great week. All of our plants are loving it. That's more of the, of the temperature that they originally uh, estimated for us, uh, predicted, was that we were gonna have a very mild winter this year and we were gonna get lots of rain. We've gotten lots of rain so far, but we definitely haven't had those mild temperatures. If you remember my last video where we were planting our dwarf um, birds of paradise, it was cold, it's been cold for a while. We had a lot of burn. You can actually see some of the burn on some of these plants, that frost burn. Um, but it's been nice for the last last few days. We're here uh, in the food forest part of the green yard. Some of you may recognize this area. So we have our koi fish pond back there. Uh, this is our hall avocado tree doing really, really well. It's actually been growing even in the winter. Got some new growth on the leaves here. Behind me, we have um, our uh, miracle fruit bush. We have our Michaelia alba. And we also have our loquat back there that's uh, flowering out right now. I'm going to do a video on that shortly uh, when we actually get some of those flowers. Um, but we're here today to do another planting video. And the same theme as last video, this is actually another rescued uh, plant. So this is a uh, gardenia. I don't know what variety, but I'm assuming a typical gardenia is uh, is this guy here. I actually got six total gardenias. You'll notice that um, they were pretty poorly taken care of. They actually didn't even form a root ball. So uh, they are bare root. And I've had some success in the past when I've taken plants out of, of previous spots and they've become bare root with actually having them uh, grow and thrive and live and, and be very successful. So I'm hoping that I can get this guy off on the right foot, get him into the ground and uh, be off on a good foot, get some, some flowers next year, maybe even in the spring of next year. Uh, the reason I'm picking this spot is because we typically, uh, in kind of a food forest, you know, we have our uh, kind of support species or our emergent layer, and then we have our, our canopy or our fruit trees, and then typically we have our, uh, you know, herbs or our shrubs below that. So these are going to be our flowering shrubs, and then of course you have your ground cover. So I've already planted a lot of timber. I've already planted most of our uh, fruit trees that are going to be in this area. I do have some additional spots that are still available but i'm going to kind of transition a little bit into planting more of our our shrubs our flowering shrubs to add kind of to that beautification of our food forest so i'm gonna actually plant this guy right behind our hall avocado here hopefully it'll help bring in some pollinators as well as just kind of add a little bit of beauty to uh, this area in front of our large male mulberry tree so let's go ahead. Uh, I got to move um, uh, about two feet of mulch that's here. So I'm going to move that two feet of mulch and we're going to go ahead and put this guy on the ground. Here we go. So one thing about our gardenias is that they really like um, well-draining soil. So I've actually planted gardenias before in the green yard. I put them in a totally wrong spot. They got no shade in the afternoon and they burned up in the summer. So um, when I got these to rescue, I did a little bit of research and I found that um, they actually prefer um, you know, shade in the afternoon. Uh, like most of our tropical trees and then they like to have uh, obviously that mild temperature but they can actually they're a little bit more cold hardy than I thought they can survive down into the low 20s so um, 
I think this is going to be a perfect spot because it's going to get sun until about 10 o'clock, uh, maybe 11 o'clock in the morning during the summer, and then shade the rest of the afternoon. So I think this is going to be a really good spot for it. Um, the other thing is I, this has been under mulch. Uh, I have my, you know, hollow avocado tree right here. It's been under mulch for a long time. I'm still going to go ahead, dig a bigger hole for it and actually mix some of my, um, uh, nursery soil in with that native soil to make sure that I get this guy off on the right foot because it does like that well draining, draining loamy soil, you know, have a little bit of sand in it and it does so much better. So I'm going to go ahead and get to moving all this mulch here and start planting this. further inspection, uh, the soil is actually almost perfect. It uh, literally looks like nursery soil. So like I said, it's been under uh, the mulch for a very long time. It actually has some sand in here as well. Uh, so this is, I mean, the best soil that you can get is right here. So I'm not going to have to mix anything in. I'm actually going to put some of the dirt back in here just because I don't need it. Uh, now I did see in here, let's see if I can find it again. Hopefully I can. Where did it go? Maybe as I put some soil back in here, I can find it. I found a big grub. Yep, here's our big grub. Um, so we got a big grub right there. Uh, I'm gonna put them in a different part of the yard. Uh, I've talked about grubs before. They don't really bother me, but I don't necessarily want them around my uh, fruiting trees. Uh, typically they're here to you know, eat all this mulch that I have here. And they do a great job of breaking down that soil and helping to create that organically rich environment that we want for our tropical trees. So I'm not opposed to them, I'm not gonna kill them. If I had chickens or ducks, I would definitely give uh, those chickens or ducks some uh, grub just because they like to eat the grubs. But as far as uh, killing them goes, it's just not something that I choose to do. Uh, we actually have two in here. Once again, breaking down that soil, probably part of the reason why it actually looks as good as it does and looks like this is probably because we do have those two grubs there as well. So uh, let's go ahead and let's get some of the soil back in here. I'll leave a little bit out and we're gonna take our uh, bare root gardenia uh, just because it doesn't have uh, any soil around the root ball there. And we're gonna go ahead and put it in the ground here. So. Um, just moving the dirt out of the way a little bit. I'm gonna stick it in. I don't want to bury it too deep, um, just because you know it's a little deceiving when when we don't have a root ball of how deep to bury it. We do still want to be able to see that root flare in there as well. So definitely want to have that root flare visible here, which it is. Um, I am gonna mix in. I do have. Uh, a little bit of clay soil here. So I'm gonna mix that in as well. But that looks really good. I'm just gonna kind of move my, my, kind of pat it down a little bit so it doesn't move so much. And then just bring in my mulch around to make sure we keep that soil nice and moist like it's been. All right, so we have our, our brand new gardenia in the ground. Uh, I'm hoping to help it just kind of thrive a little bit more. It's really not doing that bad. It does have some new growth on here and uh, it seems to have been doing okay, but really the root development is what was kind of a concern for me. Um, even as I was digging this out, you know, I found a bunch of roots from our avocado. The avocado hasn't been in the ground that long and it's already produced just a crazy amount of, of roots. And uh, I feel like that's really a sign of a good plant and a healthy plant is its root development. So yeah, it may look good on top, but we really want to know, uh, make sure it looks good on top and below the soil as well. So um, the other thing with this gardenia, I am going to be adding a lot of sulfur to it, that agricultural sulfur. Uh, I'm going to sprinkle it around just like I do the majority of my 
of my trees um, with our gardenias. They actually like that really low pH, just like the majority of our tropical trees. So our avocado tree here will actually be uh, very good friends with our small gardenia that we planted in here because uh, they both like that low pH. Gardenias are actually, I believe, a little bit lower than the avocado. They like between uh, like five and six for their pH balance. And here in the valley, we of course have that high pH of eight to 8.5. So I'm gonna add a bunch of sulfur to really help out this gardenia and make sure that it is set off on the right foot. And hopefully come spring, I can go ahead and film a uh, growing video, an update video on this beautiful gardenia. So that way we can uh, have some flowers. Hopefully we have some flowers in the spring and it's doing really, really well in this space. So um, that was a really short planning video. Usually my planning videos are like 15 to 16 minutes long. This one's probably only gonna be about eight. Uh, just because I didn't have to really dig out and it was a real quick plant there and the soil was already so amazing even though there's just this mulch breaking down it almost looks like compost already which is awesome so as always live green plant lots and of course have fun we'll see you next time